Okay, so today we're going to discuss another body fluid. We have here the synovial fluid. So speaking about your synovial fluid, so we have here an illustration of your bones and your joints. So basically the synovial fluid, so we have here the basic part. This is your joint and we have here your space, the body, the cavity here, joint cavity. And we have also here the fibrous capsule and we have also here the synovial membrane. So basically, your synovial fluid here or your joint fluid is a fluid here that try to flow or could be found here within your cavity, synovial cavity here, so itong black. Okay, and your synovial joints, the bones on that, is being lined by your synovial membrane. This is a synovial membrane, itong pinaka, that try to line here your synovial cavity. Okay, and the synovial membrane is enclosed, this one enclosed here in a capsule, you call that one as your fibrous capsule. And basically, your synovial membrane is lined by a specialized cell here, you call that one as your synoviocyte. And the synoviocyte is the one that tries to secrete your hyaluronic acid. And this is responsible here for providing viscosity providing viscosity here with our synovial fluid. Okay, so the basic function of our synovial fluid here, the following number one, provides lubrication because of that hyaluronic acid. The second one provides nutrient to your synovial joints. Third one, it try to reduce us here the compression or the friction as we are moving, as we are doing the activities here like for example, the jogging and the walking because, again, of the hyaluronic acid. Sometimes, the patient here would have uh, experienced disruption here in the synovial membrane, um, the carotid inflammation, and that's result here to your arthritis manifestation. Speaking about your arthritis, so we classify here the arthritis as the following. We have here your non-inflammatory, the non-inflammatory, and we have also here the septic and your hemorrhagic. For your non-inflammatory, that's related to disorders like your degenerative joint arthritis or also arthritis, your inflammatory type of arthritis divided further here into your uh, immunologic disorders, which includes your rheumatoid arthritis, your systemic lupus erythematosus, your scleroderma, your... Um, ankylosing spondylitis, and many others na mga immunologic disorders. On the hand, the, na, the inflammatory arthritis also could be your crystal induced with the formation of your uh, crystals here, like your monosodium urate, that includes your gout, and your calcium pyrophosphate, your, your sodium gout. Now, the third one, we have here the septic related here to your uh, bacterial infection. Then we have your hemorrhagic having a bloody red no, specimen that's related here to either traumatic puncture when you're doing your um, <clears throat> when you're doing your arthrosynthesis. We have also here hem related to your hemorrhagic disorders. We have also here hemophilia, coagulation, factor disorders, anticoagulant misuse. Okay, now, <clears throat> now we have here the laboratory test that would help us then to differentiate your different type of your arthritis. So, first one, we have here the color and clarity. So, in the case of your non-inflammatory um, arthritis, would have your clear yellow or your immunologic disorder is cloudy yellow. In the case of your crystal induced, would have here the milky septic would have here cloudy with a greenish tinge. And we have here for hemorrhagic, we have here cloudy red in color. Then for WBC count, we have here less than 1,000 for your non inflammatory, 2,000 to 75,000 for your immunologic disorders. For your crystal induced, it could go as high as to 100,000. For the septic, we have 50 to 100,000. Hemorrhagic here would be the same with your blood. For the neutrophil count, so we have that less than. Okay, 30% for your inflammatory, we have here less than 150, less than 70, more than 75, same as with your blood. Another test here that would help us differentiate, we have here the viscosity. 
So we have here good for the non-inflammatory, for inflammatory, immunologic type we have poor, beside the slow, septic we have variable, and immunologic we have low. Another one we have here, the glucose level. So for the non-inflammatory, it's normal. Also for the hemorrhagic, also normal. All the rest would have here a low glucose value. And we have also here for the crystal induced. So we'll be having here the presence of your crystals when you're having the microscopic identification. And for your septic, since this one is microbial mechanism here, so expect to have... Um, when you're doing your culture and sensitivity gram stain, so it will have your presence of your bacteria. Okay, then we have also here the normal values related to your CS synovial fluid. So we have here first, we have here the volume should be less than 3.5 ml. Color, dapat normal is pale, is color pale to colorless. Then we have also here, um, we have also here your... The circle clarity is clear, viscosity, so able to form here a string approximately uh, more than approximately four to six centimeters before you try to break when you are doing your viscosity test. Okay, so WBC count should be less than 200 cells per microliter for the neutrophil less than 25% for the crystal, so it should not have your presence of the crystals, not unless you have here the crystal induced. And we have also here the glucose level should be less than 10 mg per dl compared to your blood so you need to have your blood glucose as your reference and then we have also here the protein should be less than 3 grams per dl okay now we have here the collection of your synovial fluid specimens the process here you call it once your arthrosynthesis so approximately the normal volume the specimen should be less than 3 uh, 0.5 ml, but it could go as high as more than 25 ml, especially if they will have here the inflammation of your joints in the case of your arthritis manifestation. Okay, so normally our synovial fluid here is not able to form clot, so not unless um, you have that introduction of your fibrinogen. <clears throat> so therefore, to prevent here the clot formation during the collection process, you need to rinse your uh, syringe here with the heparin. And before you try to aspirate the synovial fluid. Then we have also here for the collection process, then with the relative um, corresponding anticoagulants here. So for the specimen delivered for the microbiome for your gram stain for the culture and sensitivity. Um, so that's being collected here in the heparin. For the ed for the hematology for the cell count here, then you need to put that one in the ed uh, with the anticoagulant. And for the specimen delivery for the chem and serology, so it should be non anticoagulated. But then again, for this uh, test here, you need to send the specimen immediately and to uh, separate here the, the, uh, the sediments of that to prevent here the distortion or to prevent here the interaction of your chemicals present on your synovial fluids. Okay, then we have here the color and the clarity. So normal. Color here should be pale, clear should up to pale yellow, and the clarity should be clear. But sometimes you could receive a specimen which is cloudy yellow here related to high WBC count in the case, for example, of your um, example, your immunologic disorders. You could also have the milky related to your crystal induced. You could also have the cloudy with the greenish to yellowish to greenish color here related to your microbial infection in the septic type of your arthritis. They could also have the cloudy red in the case of your hemorrhagic disorders. Uh, but you need to identify if the red color here is related to your either of your traumatic top or your hemorrhagic disorders. The best way you could identify if this uh, traumatic top or hemorrhagic disorders, we have here the uneven redness of the color of your specimen. Okay, check for the color of your troops here. So if there will be an even redness, it's like sa CSF natin, so that will signify a traumatic top. Okay, another one, we have here the test for your viscosity. So normal, uh, high, uh, normal synovial fluid is uh, highly viscous okay, because of the hyaluronic acid. Again, however, in cases of your arthritis, this viscosity is decreased. Okay, and uh, therefore, the flow here magiging parang fluid siya or liquid-like instead of the usual viscous na fluid. 
Okay, so we have here the test that would check for the viscosity. So we have the string, formation of a string here. So all you need to do for this one is just aspirate your synovial fluid in a syringe or even a pipette. Then allow it to flow at the tip of that. And then it will able, normally it's able to form here 4 to 6 centimeter string before it try to break. Pero kung hindi siya ganun ka viscous, so hindi siya magpo-form ng string, okay, like kung fluid siya, so mahulog siya agad, hindi siya magpo-form ng string bago siya maputol. But normally dapat, you're able to form a string of 4 to 6 centimeter before you try to break. Another test, we have the mucine clad test or ropes test. Okay, so this one uses here 2 to 5 percent of your acetic acid. So, upon addition of your acetic acid, your normal synovial fluid should be able to form a clot with a clear in the background. Okay, so we have a normal solid clot with a clear background. Okay, you can have your other way of reporting your result here with your ropes test. You can have your fair present the soft clot with a cloud in the background. Low, now result here we have the friable clot. With a clear, with a cloudy background, in a four here in a rating, would be the absence of clot. Initial na form ng clot because of decrease sa hyaluronic acid. We have here the cloudy na background. Okay, this test, however, is not routinely being performed here because um it's impractical. But then the best way, but then again, the addition of your acetic acid would help us then to identify if the specimen submitted by the patient is a novial fluid or not. Like if you are in doubt if the one submitted, the specimen submitted by the um, by the patient, for example, is you are in doubting if this one is a fluid or not, then all you need to do is just add your acetic acid. So dapat pa nag-add ka ng acetic acid, able to form here the clot. Then that will identify your synovial fluid na ang specimen niya ay synovial fluid. Okay, the next one we have here your, okay, we have here the, the cell count. So basically we are doing here the WBC count. So we have your preparation for the specimen. If the specimen is clear, you don't need to have the pretreatment. But if the specimen is highly turbid or cloudy, then you need to pretreat that one by adding a pinch of your hyaluronidase per ml of your fluid. Or you could have here your okay, one drop of your 0.05% hyaluronidase per ml of your fluid. And try to incubate it 1 to 37 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes before you try to proceed with your WBC count. For WBC count, we are not using the routine. Um, we're not using here the routine uh, diluting fluid for your WBC because again, your routine WBC uh, diluting fluid contains acetic acid. So because if you are adding, if you have the acetic acid, so baka magklat ang specimen natin. Pag nagklat siya, you could not proceed with your cell count. Therefore, you try to replace your diluting fluid here for WBC count with your NSS. Or you could have your 0.03% of your saline to lyse your red cell for that. Then we are adding methylene blue in order for you then to have the color uh, of your WBC for AC identification. Before your WBC count, again, we are still using the new power counting chamber for that. Then try to perform the routine um, cell count for your WBC with your new power counting chamber. And use also the formula for the computation with that, the standard formula. Okay, so again, the normal WBC count here for your synovial fluid should be less than 200 cells per microliter. Okay, now we go to the diff count. So the diff count, you need to have your dried smear for that. First, you need to prepare your sediment by cytocentrifugation. So that's uh, after that one, you need to make a thin smear and try to stain. So normal neutrophil should account here only for less than 25%. And for your um, body clinical size, more than 75% if you have your septic nephritis. And we have your normal should be less than 15% for the lymphocytes. Normally, what you recovered here in the synovial fluid here would, are, would be the following monocytes, macrophages, and we have also your synovial lining cell. Okay, then we have here the normal. These are actually the cells which you could recover, identify here with your synovial fluid. The first one, we have the neutrophil, that's your polymorph nuclear. We have the lymphocyte, it's your mononuclear, pero small siya. So mononuclear, which is large, we have your monocytes and macrophages, most likely they are vacuolated cell. 
Then synovial cell line is normally present here, synovial fluid that may resemble here the mono macrophages, but they are just multinucleated. Plus also resemble here the mesothelial cells because normally it's just also normally present kasi siya talaga. Then LE cell related to your SLE. This is a neutrophil which has ingested. Okay, um, this is a neutrophil which has to ingest here um, your uh, nuclear materials. So this we describe this one as the neutrophil with spherical round body. Rider cell is a macrophage just ingests, which ingests your neutrophil. Then RA or ragocyte is your uh, neutrophil with the dark granules, which has containing here the immune complex. This is related to your rheumatoid arthritis. This is an immunologic disorder. It contains your immune complex. Other cells here, we have your rice bodies. Macroscopically, it resembles the polished rice. But microscopically, it contains here collagen and fibrin. Fat droplets is just your globules. to be stained here by your fat stain like your sedentary. And lastly, we have here your hemosiderin. This is found here within your synovial lining cell. It's trying to have a cluster in that. And this is associated with your pigmented velonodular synovites.